This segment contains images that may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. We're about to witness something very shocking, something very disturbing this morning. Something that none of us would ever see in countries like Ireland or in any part of the civilised world, to be honest. And this is really, I suppose, the fallout of the economic impact of Chernobyl on little Belarus, who is suffering so greatly. And this is something that I am not looking forward to this morning. I'm actually very, very disturbed by what we have to witness. Today we uh, will have um, some uh, operations, uh, tonsillectomy. It happened every day, and uh, in this operating room. And uh, uh, sometimes uh, our uh, surgeons uh, have um, maybe seven or ten operations uh, in one day. <laughs> У нас стульчик шатается, понимаешь, ты можешь упасть, не надо плакать, мы тебя отвяжем. All operations um, are made without special anesthesia uh, because our conditions in this operating room uh, don't allow us to use anesthesia. Always it's a um, big, big panic for children and uh, certainly it's big panic for uh, doctors and nurses as well. Every operation is uh, uh, big trouble with bleeding, with uh, crying, and it's big, big stress for everybody who are, who are in this operation room. Always when I uh, see this operation, my heart uh, is broken to see how the child is suffered from this operation. Uh, but unfortunately, it's our life, it's our conditions, and we have to do this. Words fail to describe what we've witnessed here in this operating theatre this morning. You want to be stoned, not to have been moved by what we've just witnessed. I found this experience absolutely traumatic and distress, distressing beyond uh, description. That last little boy was saying, why are you doing this to me? Um, please don't cover my eyes. And then he was describing how terribly painful it was. I mean, I really had a real sort of choking sense and his fear was very, very obvious throughout the procedure, no matter how swift, swift it was. It was something that no child should ever have to go through. I really, really felt his pain today and I just feel you know, we've got to intervene in some way to make sure that this does, procedure doesn't have to continue in the future. Good to see you, darling. Great to see you. 
Yeah. Well, welcome back. How are you doing? Welcome back. Good, Good to see you. Back. How are the crew? I'm fine. Yeah, Marvelous. they're all, are they, are they exhausted? Correct. Four hours ago, they were stepping off an inbound flight from Shannon. For the next three weeks, they'll work on this huge project. It's one of many funded by the 70 million euro Irish people have sent here since the Chernobyl accident. When we first came here eight years ago, I can't describe to you what we found here. I mean, first of all, you opened the front door and your nostrils were assaulted with disgusting smells of human excrement, um, human decay. Um, the children's beds were soaked in urine and their own waste. The beds were falling apart, held together with bits of timber and bits of twine. And worst of all was the, de was the decay of the children. And the death rate was so, so high. We just didn't even know where to start here. She's going to make her better. It's going to make you better. It'll, it'll take away the pain. The children were malnourished. The children's immune systems had so deteriorated. They were full of infections because the place was so appallingly dirty. And, um, you know, we kind of said, well, do we start at the building or do we actually start with the care of the children? And we decided to work from the children out. We started to try and reduce the number of deaths, which we have slowly, slowly, but surely done. And then after that, once we put in the quality of care for the children, we said we'd work on the physical building itself to make it healthy, to make it beautiful. And now you see all this extraordinary work going on. I mean, it actually is a pleasure to be here. I used to be frightened of coming here. And now I call it Hotel Vesnova because this is the place where children are happy, where the children are educated, where the children are loved. We're finished here. All we have to do is wash down the ties, wash down the floor, small bit of skirting board. I suppose it's absolutely full on like when we wake up in the morning here, like it's not a question of, you know, Jesus, it's not about money, like this is just, it's good for, it's just good for you, like, isn't it? You don't feel like even though at home that like, I wouldn't work these hours, not at home, not anymore, like, no matter how much I'd be paid around here, it's, I don't know, it's unusual, like, when you don't work for money, it's just easy. You know, like, you know the reason, kind of, why, why you're out here, like, you know, you're able to kind of give a bit back, you know, and, uh, like, I suppose I have to admit, like, things have been kind of good for me at home, you know, work-wise, like, I've had plenty of work the last couple of years, you know, and I've, you know, and I've done all right, like, you know, and, you know, I, I've been pretty blessed at home, to, to be quite honest, like, you know. So I'm glad to be able to give a bit back, you know, and uh, as I said, like, there's times that you can go over in the morning or in the evening just to see the kids, and you see kind of what they are going through, like, and how they are kind of suffering, you know, the kind of pain, and the physical kind of pain, even though they're smiling all the time, which is amazing, like, you know. And, uh, and just to see those things, it just kind of keeps us built up and keep you going. <laughs>